Good morning, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, uh, whatever time you are watching this. I mean, listening to this because uh, this is just uh, uh, just just aud it's aud audio only audible. So this is uh, actually a, um, uh, a podcast, if you want to say uh, welcome to another Sabbath service uh, this morning. Uh, when this is recorded, this is early morning. And so I just want to say Shabbat Shalom, Happy Sabbath, peaceful Sabbath to you uh, out there, whoever's been following along with these Sabbath services, um, according to the Lord's uh, rule and His law uh, to observe the Sabbath. It's His uh, most precious, holiest day ever, ever. And I just want to say ever, uh, this Sabbath day of rest, uh, because not only is it the fourth commandment, but He worked up he did he created all things in six days and on the seventh day he rested and so welcome to another sabbath service we'll be getting to those scriptures and uh you know i've been doing a lot of meditation a lot of uh meditating on his word on his word uh and on creation itself you know and and uh it's just amazing how he created all things and so we must this is not nothing that has to do with religion. It has nothing to do with religion. And I just want to, uh, for those who listen to this, uh, these Sabbath services, I just want to let you know this is not about religion. This is about something so intimate that we can't even wrap our heads around uh, as I've been uh, since yesterday. Well, no, I, I've always, I've been doing this, but you know, as further I start meditating on how he created the trees, the animals, you know, the winged creatures, the birds, and, and just everything that we have, he created it within six days. Uh, this is why he set the seventh day apart, and he set it apart as holy for a set-apart people. And so he set it apart for a set-apart people. And so uh, those who understand this know what I'm saying. So, you know, not only here on earth, but as it is in heaven, as we Come together and rejoice here on earth as it is in heaven, because his temple, his sanctuary is in the heavenlies, and all his heavenly hosts are there with him. And so he created them also. And so they must abide by his commandments also, of course, and they're wonderful, his Sabbath day. So we are joining in the chorus, the chorus, along with his angelic, his messengers, uh, the seraphim, the, the cherubim, holy, holy, holy. And so we are joining along with them on this day, every week on this day, because this is the day that he set and set apart as holy exactly this day. And so I just, I am very honored to know this truth, and I hope you are also. And for those who do not understand this, you know, it's not about religion. Uh, we got to get intimate with the Lord. Intimate. Intimacy is number one with the Lord. And uh, what do I mean? Uh, yesterday, um, yesterday, as the sun was setting, this is when we start the Sabbath, when the sun is setting from evening to evening, uh, we start the Sabbath. And so... As I was outside, and I've lately I've been going outside, and I've been praying to the skies, to the heavens, and uh, feeling the, the, the days are cooler now. You know, that's another thing I'm going to be talking about this morning, about how the time change, about the fall equinox that brings in the fall feast. And so it brings in the seventh month. And so I'll be speaking a little bit about that today. As we proceed, so I went outside, and just to let you know, I went outside and I'm praying, and, and I'm giving him thanks for the Sabbath. I'm, I'm praying over the meal I just made for me and my little dog. And um, as I was starting to pray, I'm outside, you know, I'm on the patio, and I'm looking up to the heavens, and I feel the wind, and it's beautiful, you know, and I'm entering into his shalom, his rest. Well, lo and behold, there's a dove. And this dove, he also, or she, I like saying she, uh, I don't know which one it is, but I like saying she, um, she actually joins me as the sun is rising every morning. 
and the Lord comforts me, and I am in tune with his Ruach HaKodesh, his Holy Spirit. So these birds, you know, they comfort me just like they comfort Adam uh, at the time when Adam needed that comforting by the animals. And so, um, and so anyhow, this, this dove ends up flying down at the appropriate time when I started giving up praying into the Sabbath day of rest, you know, I, and this is what I mean by it's intimate. It is intimate because of the fact that it showed me that it's more than just religion. Oh, okay, today's the Sabbath. It's religion. We got to do this. We got to do that. It's religion. And we just go by what he says and it's religion. No, it's more than that. It's intimate. And so this is what he's been allowing for me to see in my walk in him, that it's, it's, it's way beyond we could ever imagine. When you're in connection with the angelic host, with the heavens, and you're in, you're in, you're in contact with them, you're, you're, you, you could almost feel as though you're in unison with the heavenly host in the heavens above as they worship him in spirit and in truth. And all his creation that he created, you, you get in tune with him. And the, and the Holy Spirit allows you to make that connection with nature, what he has created. And so this dove landed at that very moment as I'm praying into the Sabbath day of rest. And it just, he just, she just stood there on the wire, on a wire right up above me. And she just stood there. And I prayed. And I, I prayed for at least five minutes, for at least five minutes. And then uh, at least five minutes, I prayed into the Sabbath and I was just looking at all the wind and the trees and the sunset, the beautiful sunset that was going down. And, and she just stood there. She stood there until I finished my prayer and I was done. I said, I'm done. And she just stood there really shalom, really silent. And I said, thank you, Abba Father. I said, thank you for your beautiful winged creature. I thank you for being intimate with me. And then so I looked at the dove and I said, okay, Father, I said, you know what? And I told the dove, I told the dove, I said, you can go now. You can go with your family now or however that works, right? I said, you can go with her now. You can go, you can leave now. I go, I'm going to go inside now. So it was at least five minutes. And then as soon as I said that, I am not, I wouldn't say anything to you. I wouldn't lie to you. Of course I wouldn't. That dove heard me. Abba Father heard me, and that dove heard me, and she flew away. She flew away at that moment. And so these are things I'm telling you that these Sabbath services that I've been making, I have been speaking them, you know. Um, you know, we're called to be a royal priesthood, a priest of our own families, and we are to sanctify this day. This is a holy day. It is a very holy day. And so it is a day that he created all things. You know, we see our children, we see our families, we see ourselves, you know, our spirits. He created all of this for us and for the heavenly host. Because one day when heaven meets earth, it's going to come together and he's going to return. And so it is beautiful. It is wonderful. And it is very intimate. This is what he wants. He wants intimacy. He wants repentance and intimacy to share these days with him. And so this is what the Sabbath entails. And so Shabbat Shalom to all of you out there listening. Um, this is a very special, anointed, set apart, holy day. Okay. And so I just wanted to start that off this, this morning services with that. And so I hope everybody's enjoying their Sabbath because once again, at sunset yesterday, it commenced. We are on his Sabbath day of rest. And uh, I got plenty to go through today. I'm just going to touch lightly. I know they've been long. These sessions have been very long. Um, if you guys, uh, if you out there can pray for me, you know, I've been going through some complications um, with my legs, my knee, uh, just some situations going on with my left leg. If you could keep me in your prayers, um, I would appreciate it. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and commence now. So this is, uh, <clears throat> let me catch my breath here a little bit. This service right here is very special. Why do I say this? Um, because of the fact this is the 26th Sabbath service of the year. Uh, remember I said, according to the Lord's sabbatical cycles of seven days, there are 52 Sabbaths exactly per year, 364 days per year. Okay, and so this is the halfway mark. 
The halfway mark is today's Sabbath service. This is Sabbath service 26. Okay, so it's the 26th Sabbath service of the year, according to his creation until now. Uh, today is the sixth month, the 28th day. We're almost done with this month. We got a couple more days to go, and then we got the Feast of Trumpets coming in. Yes, the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, and so that will be uh, in just uh, this this coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday will be the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah. Okay, so this is uh, according to his calendar now. Okay, so those who do not understand his calendar yet, I am going to be doing more teachings on the calendar. And uh, and to, just to show you... Um, I'm going to be doing some teachings that, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, the Jewish calendar is off. The days are off, and um, they are off. They're they are off very much. And so, I just I'm going to do some teachings on that to edify, to build up, not to tear down, to edify. And uh, I will be coming out with that teaching very soon on this podcast. I will be doing it. I'm preparing it now. You know and um, and so just be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that. Okay, be on the lookout for that. So um, let me go ahead and continue. So this is the sixth month. This is the 28th of the sixth month, according to God's calendar, according to Yah Elohim's creation calendar, Yeshua, for he is one. Uh, 5949, 5949, okay? And so from the 12th division, we got Yachim. From the 12th division, we got in the priestly order, we got Yakim, Yakim, And so today is September 14th, 2024. September 14th, 2024. Okay, and so um, I just wanted to let you know on that subject before we start here, okay? And I'm just going to read something to you that um, really quick and then... Um, and then one of the reasons I, I'm going to pull this up for you, okay, um, you know, the Lord created all things, okay? He is the creator. And so if you believe in God, you believe in the Lord, you are a believer, okay? We know that he created all things, okay? He created the moon, the sun, the stars, all the planets, okay? Okay. He created all the planets, all right? And so we got an equinox coming, right? And so uh, this equinox, it starts on the Gregorian calendar. It starts on the 22nd. And so I say, okay, well, he created all things. And so now with, um, with technology, right, NASA and all the technology, what well, they can tell with all their modern-day equipment how this works, how this works. And so we're going to get to the message, okay? But how does this work? Well, I just seen this and I'm like, well, he he made the seasons. Of course he did. He, he made the summertime. He made the wintertime. He made the fall. He made the spring. He made four different seasons. And this actually happens in the universe that he created in seven days. And he places his holy days in two of those seasons, in the spring season and in the fall season. So now you say, okay, so according to the calendars, whose calendar? This is what we're saying, whose calendar? Well, we're saying his calendar. He's the one that created time. He's the one that created everything. So it's his calendar. It's his creation. So, But now we have the technology to understand that when there is a fall equinox, it's been some hot days, some really hot days, right? We went through a heat wave, and all of a sudden, we're getting close to September on the Gregorian calendar, September 22nd. And lo and behold, what's going to happen? An equinox. An equinox. I mean, you could physically study this and say, okay, and so I'm going to read you this, right? I'm going to read you this. Just this, 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 this little part here, okay? The September equinox is the moment the sun crosses the celestial equator. Not to get too deep on you, right? The September equinox is the moment the sun crosses the celestial equator. 
an image, an imaginary line in the sky above Earth's equator from north to south. This happens on September 22nd, 23rd, or 24th in most years. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'm just going to let you know that's it. And you say, well, what is it? The moment the sun crosses the celestial equator. Okay, who do you suppose made that happen? He's the creator. He did. That brings in the fall season. That starts off the seventh month, according to his calendar. See, this is, this is explaining his calendar right here. What did I just tell you? That is explaining his calendar. And it never fails. It never is a, never a day late, according to his calendar, okay? And so I thought you'd find that neat, okay? It's really neat. And you could you could you can uh, study this. You could understand his seasons and how he placed his holy feast days in his seasons. And so this is why I'm saying this coming Wednesday is the feast of trumpets, because we have entered into a different season. We have entered into the fourth season. And where's the explanation? It's in the sky. When there's a change of season, he did that. He created that. And so this is why I'm saying it's his calendar. And we cannot interrupt his calendar. It's impossible to interrupt his calendar. You would have to change the equinoxes. You would have to change what he has created. And it's already set year in, year out, year in, year out. We got four seasons of the year, year in, year out. Okay. He is just amazing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start now because sometimes I could get going and all of a sudden, I'm here like three or four hours, okay? And I can't be standing too long right now. Just to let you know, I can't be standing too long or sitting too long, okay? And so, and yes, right now, just so you'll know, I am standing. And so, um, and so yeah, I thought you'd find that very neat. Okay? So I'm going to come up with that special with love, okay, to all the rabbis and sages out there uh, that wrote the Midrash and the Talmud, okay? I've been doing some studying, and um, yes, I'm going to be coming out with some facts how this calendar that they're on is not according to uh, Yahweh's calendar, okay? And so be on the lookout for that, okay? And so let me go ahead and start now, and then, um, and then, so yeah, get ready for it. It's already a change of season, It's and guess what the weather is? <laughs> and then I'm like looking at the weather. I always look at how much the percentage of the weather is, right? So we went from 103, 103, okay, just last week. Everybody was burning up. It was hot. And guess what the, the change, right? The change, the, it's, not, it's not the equinox yet, but it's, it's in the vicinity of a week now, right? A week. The change has happened. And so when you say, okay, what is the Lord's calendar? The change has happened, because we went from 103 degrees outside, hot, okay? Today, yesterday, today has been 77 degrees, 78 degrees in the daytime. That's the drop was from one day to the next. It gradually went to 77, 78, 77. Today it's going to be 77, tomorrow 78. And then we, this is the change. This is the change. It's happening. I'm like, wow, okay. The sacred sevens, right? The sacred sevens. So this is a very blessed day. The sacred sevens and the fabulous fours, okay? All right. So now let me go ahead and continue. Um, we already played the show for a blast for you. Very special day. And uh, we're going to go ahead and commence now. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, this is the 26th Sabbath service of the year, uh, 628, okay, 5949. And on your Gregorian calendar, September 14, 2024, it is from the priestly order, the division Yachim. We're going to be uh, bringing you these scriptures. If you're not in tune with these scriptures, um, I'm not going to be going through the explanation. You would have to go to the first Sabbath service on my playlist, and you can start playing it from there because I go through all these descriptions, okay? So for right now, we're just going to read through these scriptures, okay? Read through these scriptures. 
And so if you want to more in detail about the priestly order, please go to Sabbath service on my playlist when I began it. Uh, I think I believe there's like five of them now, five or six of them. And it gives you those, those uh, explanations in depth, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue. All right, let me uh, go ahead and get there. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. And another messenger came and stepped next to the temple. And golden fire pans were in his hand, and much incense was given to him, to give it as the prayer of the set-apart ones before the temple and before the throne. And Aaron, Exodus chapter 30, verse 7, And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. When he dressed the lamps, he shall burn incense upon them. In Genesis chapter 2, 1 through 3, The heavens and the earth and all their vast array were finished. And on the seventh day, Elohim finished his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then Elohim blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it, and he made it holy, because he rested in it from all his work of creation, which he had done. And so let me just make a quick comment here. When you join in on this Sabbath day, and you understand it, and you get intimate with the Lord, this is going on in the heavens. I already explained that here on earth as it is in heaven because he created the heavenly host also. But just remember, you are, you are practicing something that has been going on since the creation of the earth, the Sabbath day. You are practicing. You are in something. If you know this truth, and you practice the Sabbath just the way he commanded us to. You are practicing it. You're practicing a day that is being practiced, commanded, ever since the beginning of time until now. And that's a lot of years according to our timing. Just understand this, how honored that we could be practicing a holy day set in motion by him for that long of a time. And it is still going today. The Sabbath day still is going today. Why? Because he says it's going to be forever. Because he created all things in six days and he rested on the seventh. So when you are standing and you're worshiping on the Sabbath day, just know that you are practicing something that has been going on since the creation of the world all the way till today. So I just want to mention that. So that was Genesis chapter 2, 1 through 3. What an honor. What an honor. Exodus chapter 31, verses 16 and 17. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant a covenant that is forever. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. When he finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the covenant, stone tablets written with the finger of Elohim. Kadesh et Hayom which means holiness of the Sabbath day. And so when you hear me speak in Hebrew, this is the language of Elohim. We must understand this. I don't speak too fluently Hebrew, just to be honest with you. But I do like speaking his words in Hebrew. Sometimes I like speaking his words. I like speaking them because I know, I know that they're, it's his language. And so... Kadesh et Hayom, holiness of the Sabbath day. So we're going to pray into the Sabbath day right now. If you would pray along with me. Our Elohim and the Elohim of our fathers, El of Abraham, El of Isaac, and El of Jacob, may you be pleased with our rest today. 
May you sanctify us in your commandments. May you satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation. And may you purify our hearts to serve you in truth, in love and favor. O Yahweh Yeshua, for you are one. May you grant us your holy Sabbath as an inheritance, and may Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Amen, and amen, and amen. We are called to be a set-apart royal priesthood, a holy nation here on earth as it is in heaven. Numbers chapter 3, 1 through 10. Priests and Levites. Now these are the generations of Aaron and Moses at the time when Yahweh spoke with Moses on Mount Sinai. These then are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests, whom he ordained to be minister as priest. But Nadab and Abihu died before Yahweh when they offered strange fire before Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar ministered as priests in the lifetime of their father Aaron. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and have them stand before Aaron the priest, and they may minister to him, and they shall keep his responsibility and the responsibility for the whole congregation before the tent of meeting to perform the service of the tabernacle. They shall also keep all the furnishings of the tent of meeting, along with the responsibility of the sons of Israel, to perform the service of the tabernacle. You shall thus give the Levites to Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given to him from among the sons of Israel. So you shall appoint Aaron and his sons that they may keep their priesthood. But the outsider who comes near shall be put to death. Just a quick comment, a quick comment. This is the divine order from then till now to the millennial kingdom. They're all connected. This is the divine order. And this is what Yeshua, Jesus, came to mend, mend. Okay? And so we go on and continue. 1 Chronicles chapter 24, 1 through 5. Now the divisions of the sons of Aaron were these. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father had no sons. So Eleazar and Ithamar ministered as priests. And David with Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and, the, and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar divided them according to their assignments for their service. And more chief men were found from the sons of Eleazar than the sons of Ithamar. So they divided them thus. There were sixteen heads of fathers' households of the sons of Eleazar, and eight of the sons of Ithamar, according to their fathers' households. Thus they were divided by lot, the one as, as the other, for they were leaders for the sanctuary and leaders for Elohim, both from the sons of Eleazar and the sons of Ithamar. Shemaiah, the son of Nathaniel, the scribe from the Levites, wrote them down in the presence of the king, the princes, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech the son of <coughs> Abiathar, and the heads of the father's households of the priests and of the Levites, one father's household taken for Eleazar and one taken for Ithamar. And so we are on the twelfth division of these priests. There's twenty-four. We are on the twelfth division the 12th, for Yahim, and this is in uh, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 12. The 12th is priest Yahim. The divine connection, <clears throat> Luke chapter 1, 5 through 6. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the 8th division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous in the sight of Elohim, walking blamelessly in the commandments and righteous requirements of the Lord. So then we have 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you, my beloved out there, believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, 
You are a chosen family, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for Yah Elohim's own possession, a set-apart people, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, the divine connection. This is where Yeshua, our high priest, mended what, was, what had been severed in these days that He came. In Revelation chapter 20, we got confirmation from John. Blessed is he who has a part in the first resurrection, for over them there is no power of the last death. But they will be priests to Yahweh and his Mashiach, and they will rule with him a thousand years. Millennial kingdom. Ezekiel chapter 44, 15, millennial kingdom. The Levitical responsibilities, but the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, Connection from then till now to the Millennial Kingdom. But the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, who kept the responsibility of my sanctuary, when the sons of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me to minister to me, and they shall stand before me to bring near to me the fat and the blood, declares Lord Yahweh. Leviticus, we go back. Here is the comparison. Leviticus chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. We must study Leviticus. Yahweh then spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. It is a perpetual statute throughout your generations. And so as to separate between the holy and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean, and so as to instruct the sons of Israel in all the statutes which Yahweh has spoken to them through Moses. Now we have Ezekiel 44, 23 and 24, Millennial Kingdom. Nor shall any of the priests drink wine when they enter the inner court. Moreover, they shall instruct my people about the difference between the holy and the profane, and make them know the difference between the unclean and the clean. And in a dispute, they shall take their stand to judge. They shall judge it according to my judgments. They shall also keep my laws and my statutes in all my appointed times, the feast days, and keep my Sabbath holy. So there is very far beyond of a doubt. Uh, these are not coincidences. And actually, I just saw the temperature right now. It is 77 degrees. It's going to be 77. So anyhow, I just saw that right now. So Ezekiel chapter 11. So these, these similarities are just amazing. How this continued Levitical priesthood, it just continues. And our high priest being Yeshua, our king, Yahweh Elohim, for he is one. Verse Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16. Therefore say, thus says Lord Yahweh, although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Hosea chapter 14, verse 2. Take words with you, says uh, Yahweh, and return to Yahweh. I'm sorry, take words with you from Hosea the prophet. Take words with you and return to Yahweh. Say to him, Take away all iniquity, receive us graciously, Abba Father, for we will offer up the sacrifices of our lips. And so this is what we do right now. We offer up sacrifices of our lips, sacrifices of obedience. And this is what he's called us, us out to be, is obedient, a holy priesthood to be obedient. And for right now, offer up sacrifices of obedience, spiritual sacrifices of obedience. Amen and amen. And so now we're going to go on with this next section of the service. So we're called to be a royal, holy priesthood, a set-apart nation. And so we're going to go ahead and start with this next, next portion of this uh, Sabbath service. Yahweh Yeshua, we're going to go ahead and pray into this. Yahweh Yeshua, we will sanctify your name in this world, even as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your holy prophet Isaiah and by Yohanan, here on earth as it is in heaven. 
So this section of this Sabbath service is to let us know that there, there is a service going on in the heavens on every Sabbath. There is a temple there. There is a sanctuary there. And this is where our King of Kings sits on his throne as high priest. And it is a temple. There are services going on in his temple. This is Sabbath. And these scriptures are to let us know that we worship not only here on earth, but with the angelic host, the heavenly host in heaven on this day. And so we got from Isaiah chapter 6, 2 through 4, Isaiah saw the throne room of Yahweh. It is also called the Merkava. In Ezekiel chapter 1, it is the Merkava. It is the cherubim. It is the seraphim. It is the throne, the chariot throne of Yahweh Elohim Yeshua. And so we got Isaiah chapter 6, 2 through 4 to confirm this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw Yahweh sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now let's just, I just need to explain this a little bit further here. It is no, no doubt at all no more that we know that Yeshua died and he proclaimed to be the son of him, the son of Yahweh. He complained to be, he, he said he was Yahweh. He says, before Abraham was, I am. So it's no doubt as believers, we know he is the Lord. Yeshua is the Lord. He always has been the Lord. And so right here we have to understand who Isaiah saw sitting on his throne. And so it is no, no mystery no more that Yeshua made that claim that he is Yahweh Elohim. And this is why they killed him. And so we must understand this. So when I read the scripture, we can see this. And who was sitting on the throne? Who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Who sits on his holy throne? It's our high priest. It's our king. It's our creator. And so I'm going to go ahead and read Isaiah chapter 6, 2 through 4. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw Yahweh sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above him stood seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling out to one another, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh Yeshua. All the earth is full of his glory. All the earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. So, my beloved, together in unison, together in unison, wherever you are at right now, may, may we partake in this one more time together. Wherever you are, you're listening to this. Just say it with me. Believers, set apart believers out there, say it with me. Say it with me. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh, Yeshua of hosts. All the earth is full of his glory. Because as we are doing this, we're in unison. We're in unison with them in the heavens together, proclaiming and giving glory to Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Here on earth as it is in heaven, he is holy. At the sound, verse 4, at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. The temple. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, Yahweh of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth with it, and behold, he said, Behold, this has touched your lips, he says, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin forgiven, atoned for, 
We're going to be talking about the Day of Atonement today. I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, Abba, Father. I said, Abba. I said, Abba, Father. Hineni, here I am. Send me, Abba. Amen and amen and amen. And so we have in Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 8, the Merkava, which means, if you're not aware of what the Merkava is, it's the chariot, chariot throne, the chariot throne, the throne room of Yahlohim, his temple, in Hebrew. Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 8, says, And after this I saw that a door was open in the heavens, and now this is Yohanan confirming he also saw this temple and the temple services going on. He says, After this I saw that a door was open in the heavens, and the first voice which I heard that spoke with me like the voice of a shofar said to me, Come here, and I want to show you what will happen after this. And forthwith and immediately the Ruach HaKodesh rested on me, and I saw a throne sitting in the heavens, and one sat on the throne, and he who sat on it, his appearance was like the appearance of the stone sapphire and jasper. And all around the throne was a bowl like turquoise. And around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and twenty-four elders sat on them. Clothed with white garments on their heads was a crown of gold, white linen, clothed with white linen. And from the throne there were they went out. The white linen has everything to do with being a royal priest, wearing white linen, white garments. Just as uh, he gave the instructions to Aaron and the priests. And from the throne there went out voices and thunders and lightnings. And there were seven laps before the throne. And they are on the seven spirits of Yahweh, the seven ruchot of Yahweh. And before the throne was a sea of glass like the appearance of crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living beings, four living creatures, full of eyes at their front and at their back. And the first living creature was like the appearance of a lion, and the second like an ox, and the third like a man, and the fourth like an eagle. And each one had six wings. Also from the inside they were filled with eyes, and they do not have rest, day or night, but say continually, Kadosh, 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 is Yahweh Tezvaot, the mighty, who was and is and will be. Once again, Kadosh, 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 is Yahweh Tezvaot, the mighty, who was and is and will be. Amen and amen. And so that concludes the, the beginning of these Sabbath services. I include all these scriptures for a reason, so that you can hear them over and over and over, and so that it could be really placed in your heart to study this divine connection. This is why I go through all those scriptures at the beginning of every Sabbath service, so that you can study this. And the more you study this, you see the divine connection on what we should be studying right now as a priesthood. Because when you die and you are a believer, you want to be uh, told good and faithful servant. You want to know about these offerings that are going to be going on in the millennial kingdom as we read in Ezekiel. We are to be reading about the offerings, how these things will be going on. And to conduct our lives in obedience to his commandments according to what they will be teaching. His laws will go forth from Zion. His laws will go forth, and they have never been abolished. So let us understand this, my beloved. That is the introduction of this Sabbath day service unto the Lord. Amen and amen. And so the Sabbath psalm of the week, this is Psalm 26. Psalm 26. This is the Sabbath psalm of the week of this sabbatical Sabbath day. Psalm 26 says, Give justice to me, O Yahweh. A psalm of David. Give justice to me, O Yahweh, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in Yahweh. I will not waver. Test me, O Yahweh, and try me. 
Refine my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I do not sit with worthless men, and I do not go with pretenders. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I shall wash my hands in innocence. So I will go around your altar, O Yahweh, in order to proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and to recount all your wondrous deeds. O Yahweh, I love the inhabitation, I'm sorry, O Yahweh, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not take my soul away along with sinners, nor my life with the bloodshed of men nor my life with men of bloodshed, in whose hands is a wicked scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground, on a firm foundation. In the congregations, I shall bless Yahweh. And so this is David. He understood the Merkava, he understood the throne room of the house of Elohim. He understood the services that go on. He understood this. He was very, of course, he spoke with him. He talked with him. He knew these things were going on in the heavens, in the throne room of heaven. And he loved it so very much. He was a man after after the father's own heart. He loved his commandments. He loved being obedient. He he knew about the Sabbath day. He knew that there is no work to be done. He knew this. And so, Abba Father, thank you so very much for David. Thank you so very much for using these mighty men. And so that was uh, the Psalm 26 of of this sabbatical week, this 26th week, this 26th Sabbath. And so now we're going to go ahead and commence. Uh, into the reading for today. Uh, this reading is um, Shemini. Okay, the name is Shemini. Shemini means eighth in the Hebrew, Shemini. Once again, this is for the priestly division 12 in the order of the priesthood, Yakim. You can go ahead and read that in First Chronicles chapter 24, 1 through 19. And, um, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and open this up now. We're going to Bless this uh, first. We're going to bless this uh, Sabbath portion reading. And then we'll go ahead and commence here. So we got the Torah, Leviticus chapter 9, verse 1 through 13. uh, The chapter 13, verse 59. Then we have from the prophets, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6, 1 through chapter 7, verse 17. And from the renewed covenant, which is the the most important, the most important. Why do I say this? Because Yeshua confirmed that he is Yahweh Elohim. He is the Father, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is one. Amen. So this is the, the very best part is the renewed covenant because he came to confirm everything that happened ever since the creation of the world and that it is him. He is him. He always will be him. And he forever will be him. Amen. And so um, it's just amazing. He is amazing. He is awesome. And so uh, once again, this is the Sabbath 26, the Torah portion, a uh, Shemini. Okay. So we're going to touch a little bit. It's a, it's going to be a lot. Okay. Uh, there's so much uh, I can go through. I, I, I was trying to decide what to go through, what to talk about. The Lord put a few things on my heart as all these chapters, they're just amazing. They're so rich with uh, so much that, that came to pass when he walked on this earth. And we're going to be talking about the Day of Atonement. We're going to talk about leprosy, okay, leprosy, leprosy, okay. And so um, I just I just want to let you know this. Um, and so, yes, let's go ahead and continue here. Let's go ahead and continue So we're going to start in, um, let me see here, and we're going to do the the blessing for today. We're going to go ahead and commence, okay? All right. All right. So, 
Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Okay, so Shemini, uh, Sabbath 26. Uh, maybe I'll be speaking on leprosy, maybe not. Okay, but anyhow, uh, we'll just see right now. We're going to be going over this Torah portion today. And so let me go ahead and, uh, and uh, commence, okay, with the Sabbath blessing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue uh, with, uh, I'm sorry, just I said uh, pray into the Sabbath. We already prayed into the Sabbath. Pray into this portion of the reading from his word, okay? And so if I may, I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, Sephatai. Sephatai in the Hebrew means my lips, okay, my lips. And so this is a prayer um, that is going to rise up to the Lord, and uh, may He open up my lips. So it's it's it goes like this: Adonai sefetai tiftach ufi yagid tehilatecha. Adonai, may You open up my lips so that my mouth may declare Your praise. Amen and amen and amen. Yihiyu leratzon, which means may they be acceptable. And I'm, I'm going to give these definitions, probably be the last time I'll give you the definitions, um, because I'm just going to pray into them myself. And so this will probably be the last time that I give you the definitions of Hebrew and English, okay? And so I know that you're just listening to this on audio, so you cannot see the presentation, okay? So, um, imre fi. Vihigyon divi lefanecha Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua Tituri vigoili, which means may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Abba Father, be acceptable before you, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen and Amen and Amen. And so now we conclude the Torah blessing. Baruch Ata. Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and has given us His Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai Notein HaTorah. Blessed are you, O Lord, Giver of the Torah. Amen and Amen and Amen. And so this once again, this. Um, this Torah portion is Shemini, Shemini. So Shemini means eighth, okay, for the division 12th, Yachim. And so uh, it's on the eighth day. So it says, now it happened on the eighth day. This is chapter 9, verse 1. Now it happened on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, and it goes on to speak about the the offerings, as we've been going on through the past weeks about the, the different offerings. If you missed that um, Sabbath service where I went through the offerings on what they were and what they entailed, uh, please go back to the couple a couple Sabbaths ago or last week's Sabbath, and it'll go more in depth of what these offerings are. And this is what we should be studying as we're going to be a royal priesthood in the Millennial Kingdom. And there will these things will be taking place. Amen. And Yeshua being our, our 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 high priest, and so I'm going to go ahead and go forth, and I'm going to read you the Day of Atonement, the Day of Atonement, and we're going to be speaking about the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is not only constituted then, but the Day of Atonement is constituted uh, by the Lord Himself. This Day of Atonement was not only given by Him. But ultimately, it came to pass. And ultimately, it has not fully come to pass yet. What do I mean by fully come to pass? The blood covenant that was made by His blood, the atoning blood of our Savior, being the Lamb that was slain. His atonement was for everyone. His atonement. The Day of Atonement. And we're going to be going over atonement was given to Moses to give to Aaron. And Aaron was making atonement for his children, for the priesthood, his sons, and for the community of Israel, atoning for their sins. So we know this came to pass. 
with our high priest, the Passover lamb, which has to do with the Passover. So it came to pass. It didn't fulfill completely, but it did, it did fulfill until his glorious return. All these feast days will completely be fulfilled. All the feast days. This is why the feast days are so holy and they are commanded by the mouth of the Lord in Leviticus chapter 23. And they've been going on since the beginning of time as we're talking about the Sabbath since the beginning of time. Because why? Because his temple was set up in the heavens ever since the beginning of time. He sits in the heavens as king, king of the universe, creator of all things. So these feast days, they have been thought of and they have been proclaimed by Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua himself, ever since the creation of the earth. He is the beginning and the end. He knows the first, he's the first and the last. He knows everything in between. He knows the future. He knows our thoughts as we think them. He knows our hearts. He knows the intentions of our hearts. And so he knows history. He knows what's going to be happening next month. He knows what's going to be happening next year, and especially in Israel and all over the earth. It's his earth. He knows history. Of course, he made history. He created all things. He created time itself. Time is precious. This is why we cannot get involved with his time. We cannot change it. He created time in itself. He created the days. He created mankind. This is why we can't interrupt his time. It's impossible. He set it forth in motion. And he's going to return in the days that he set. Which have everything to do with the spring feast and the fall feast. And so we're going to be, we're going to be zeroing in, in on the Day of Atonement. When he died for our sins, he atoned for our sins to be forgiven of our sins by his blood. He, by his blood, he confirmed the covenant that he made to Abraham. He confirmed his covenant. And it's going to come to pass when he returns into the Day of Atonement for Israel's redemption. Those who, who are stiff-necked. And those that don't want to put their faith and trust in Jesus, Yeshua, Hamashiach in Jesus Christ for as their Lord and Savior, as their Messiah, as their Mashiach, those who are stiff-necked all the way until that day. And so that day of atonement needs to come to pass, and that's entering into his millennial kingdom, Israel's redemption. And so, yes, do they have the choice to choose to be atoned for right now, today? Yes, everybody Everybody across the whole world has the choice to make for their sins to be atoned for, forgiven, by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Yeshua Messiah, so that your sins can be blotted out, so that you can be saved. For today is a day of salvation, and they have every right to believe in Him. We're talking about the Jews. We're talking about the rabbis. We're talking about those who change so many things according to their midrash, according to their their uh, their uh, their Talmud, and their midrashes and their Talmud. They changed many things. They added many laws. They added many rules. They have time to repent. And Yeshua, like I said earlier, Yeshua came to give them. He brought it to them first because he knows what was going on in those days. He knows how they corrupted the priesthood. He knows how the temple was corrupted, the same temple that condemned him to death. He brought salvation for them to repent, and he brings it for them today to take away, to change the things that they changed, to change the rules and all those days that they added to his calendar and so forth for changing his calendar. He offers them repentance still to this day to be atoned for. And so we, we're going to go ahead and commence with this day of atonement. And so in chapter 9, verse um, 
We're going to take it verse 6 and 7. Chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. It says, And Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded you to do, that the glory of Yahweh may appear to you. Moses then said to Aaron, Come near to the altar and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering, that you may make atonement for yourself and for the people. Then offer the offering for the people, that you may atone for them, that you may make atonement for them, just as Yahweh has commanded. So who was acting priest? Who was acting high priest? Aaron was. So when you make this holy connection, this divine connection, who is our high priest? Who was acting high priest that was given these directions to do on behalf of Israel? Well, this was Aaron. He was chosen. He's the only one that had the right. He was chosen. He had the right to begin this priesthood until Yeshua comes. And he came and he became our high priest, but he has always been high priest. But he gave this responsibility to Aaron and to Moses and to him only, only in the line, the Levitical priesthood, the sons of Zadok, Zadok the priest. And this is what Yeshua came to man because our high priest came in the order of Melchizedek. And so now we go back to this atonement and now we read it. Once again, in chapter 9, verse 7, verse 6 and 7, it says, And Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded you to do, that the glory of Yahweh may appear to you. Moses then said to Aaron, Come near to the altar and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering, that you may make atonement for yourself and for the people. Then offer the offering for the people that you may make atonement for them, just as Yahweh has commanded. And so now we're going to go, and then we're going to go ahead and read uh, this Day of Atonement now. And so we're going to go ahead and get to these scriptures here. In Leviticus chapter 23, first we're going to take it from, yes, Leviticus chapter 23. We'll go ahead and start it here. And then we're also going to be looking into 2 Samuel chapter 7. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, go ahead and turn to Leviticus chapter 23, verses 20, 26 through 32. The Day of Atonement. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, On exactly the tenth day of the seventh month, which I just said, we are entering to the seventh month this coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, mark it on your calendar. That will be the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah. Ten days later is the Day of Atonement. Ten days later is the Day of Atonement. And who makes up this calendar? Man does not make up this calendar. They have no jurisdiction at all to change this calendar. None. Because the Lord spoke this. This is the Lord's voice. And I want to make that super clear. That we are not to add to or remove or take away from or change any days. Now, I'm going to mention this once right now. And, and be on the lookout for when I come out with that special according to the calendar. On how they took the responsibility and they think the rabbis and the sages that they had the authority to judge and to change the dates of the calendar. Number one, number one, Shavuot. Shavuot is considered the feast of weeks. It starts on the day after the Sabbath. You count 49 days. They also call it the Omer count. That day should end on the first day of the week. And if it doesn't land on the first day of the week, which is a Sunday now, then they are breaking commandment. They have changed the order of the calendar. That is just one example of what I'm going to be bringing you on these specials. 
and how they can repent of how they have changed the calendar. And so you count 49 days from the day of first fruits, Shavuot, which came to pass in Acts chapter 2. If you are off by one day, because he says count exactly 49 days, and on the 50th, he poured out his Holy Spirit, it came to pass. And so if you, according to their calendar, the Jewish calendar, you can take that day and you can count, okay, the day of resurrection, first fruits, you can count 50 days, and it should end on the first day of the week on a Sunday. If it comes out to a Monday, if it comes out to a Tuesday, if it comes out to a Wednesday, then you just broke commandment. And you can tell that that calendar is mistakenly off just by that one. And I got more for you. So why do I say all this? Because the Day of Atonement is exactly the same. It gives you specific dates. Okay, so now we go on with the Day of Atonement. And Yahweh spoke to Moses. So this coming Wednesday is going to be the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, so we know that starts, and 10 days after that is the Day of Atonement. Okay, exactly. So it says, And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, On exactly the 10th day of this seventh month is the Day of Atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. And you shall humble your souls and bring an offering by fire near to Yahweh. And so what am I saying here? If their calendar is off by one or two days, then they are doing this, but on the wrong day. On the wrong day. And once again, it's not in the Lord's order. So it is breaking commandment. And so now you go to verse 28. It says, and you shall not do any work. On this same day, any work, for it is a day of atonement. It is a Sabbath day. It will be a Sabbath day. We still consider this, and yes, forever will be a Sabbath day. <clears throat> and as we're reading, it's a perpetual covenant. We're going to be reading this. And you shall not do any work on this same day, for it is a day of atonement. To make atonement on your behalf before Yahweh your Elohim. If there is any person who will not humble himself on this same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And as for any person, any person who does any work on this same day, that person I will cause to perish from among his people. You shall do no work at all. And this is where I'm, 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 I'm going to make a point here. It is to be a perpetual statute. That means forever, forever, forever. This is the divine connection into the millennial kingdom. Forever. And forever means forever. Throughout your generations in all your places of habitation, it is to be a Sabbath of complete rest to you. And you shall humble your souls on the ninth of the month at evening from evening until evening you shall keep your sabbath so you say why evening to evening why sunset to sunset that is a 24-hour day and it's telling us right here so on the evening of the ninth from evening to evening okay it leads into the 10th okay so we know this it says it is to be sabbath of complete rest to you and you shall humble your souls on the ninth of the month at evening from evening until evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. So he is calling us to know that there is a Sabbath on the Day of Atonement that leads into the Day of Atonement. Specific instructions to live by because it is a perpetual statute and it will lead right into the Millennial Kingdom. Amen? And so this is why it says perpetual. So now we go ahead and continue here. How we're going to show through Scripture how this Day of Atonement is for Israel's redemption. Okay, and so now we go ahead and, and, and go to the next scripture here. Now, once again, the blood covenant, the covenant that was confirmed by Yeshua. Yeshua being Yah Elohim. It's no, it's no, it's no mystery. Him and the Father are one. 
So when he came, he confirmed this by his blood. Every law that was given by his fingers, every law that was given was confirmed by his blood. He lived in obedience to all the covenant, all the covenant laws. He was obedient to death. And he offered them forgiveness by his blood. Especially as the time that they were living in when he came at a perfect time. When they, they had made up all their rules and regulations, the Talmud and the oral laws, etc. At a perfect time. When that temple was corrupt. And so in Matthew 27 verse 50 through 54, he came to atone for their sins. Because he knew what would happen to the Talmud. And it continued throughout that time. After his death, after his resurrection, they began it then. It, it started in B.C., 175 B.C., when the temple was desecrated by Antiochus Epiphanes IV. And he set up a Seleucid, a Seleucid a god worship, if you want to say, which was Zeus. And so this priesthood had been corrupted. That temple of the Lord had been corrupted, desecrated by a pig being slaughtered on the altar by Antiochus Epiphanes IV. And so all the righteous priesthood, all the righteous priesthood from Aaron, that he only gave the authority to Aaron and to all the priests to keep the temple in order, to keep the temple righteous by following his Torah, his commandments, and his Torah and his commandments only, not adding to or not taking away which if you would read the Mishnah, you would read all the Talmud, you read so many things that they changed about the Levitical laws and everything. They added so much. And this is evident. Evident. So he came at a time and he reestablished the order, the priestly order. And he calls us to be a royal priesthood to carry on that righteous order in our lives as a priest in our families and a priest in our communities and a priest that when we die, we will become those priests in the, in the, in the millennial kingdom with him and him being our high priest, a royal priesthood, a set apart people. And so, but they have the, 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 the same, the same offered to us atonement for the blood that atones for our sins, our trespasses. Well, he brought it for them. And for everyone. And many decided not to believe in him. But many did. This is where we have Messianics. Jews that believe in Yeshua Mashiach as their Lord and Savior. And they need to know this also about the priesthood. Many do not understand it. They don't grasp it yet. And so this is one of the reasons we take this to the Jews and the Gentiles together. One new man, one new man. And so in Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 through 54, it says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. He says, No more. I opened it up. I opened it up to all of you. It says, and the earth shook and the rocks were split and the tombs were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion and those who were with him keep uh, keeping guard over Jesus, Yeshua. When they saw the earthquake and the things that were happening, became very frightened and said, Truly this was Elohim's son. Amen and amen. So why do I mention this scripture? It was the atoning blood. It was the atoning blood confirming the covenant. Amen. And so now we go on to Matthew, uh, Ezekiel, I'm sorry. Chapter 36, 22 through 38. Now I'm reading into the millennial kingdom. The Day of Atonement, when it'll fully come to pass. And so right now is a time to take it to the Jews, the unbelieving Jews, 
because they can be grafted in just because they don't believe doesn't mean they can't come to believe. Many are coming to salvation. We take it to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Salvation, the good news of salvation for trespassing his commandments and the way, the way to have the Holy Spirit placed inside of our hearts so that we can obey his commands so that we may be in obedience to his commandments, his laws, and his ways. Because this is exactly what he's going to do with Israel in that day when he returns. So this is the day of atonement come to pass, fully come to pass. And so in Ezekiel chapter 36, 22 through 38, it says, They will know that he is Yahweh, Yeshua, the one they pierced. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says Lord Yahweh, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act. And this is for Israel. Whoever is listening, whoever is a Jew, that don't believe in Mashiach. It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for his holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you have come. I will prove the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. Then the nations will know that he is Yahweh, declares Lord Yahweh. When I prove myself holy among you in their sight, and I will take you from the nations, gather you from all the lands, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean, atoning for them. I will cleanse you from all your uncleanness and from all your idols. Verse 26, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit, my Holy Spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to do my judgments, his laws. And you will inha inhabit the land that I gave to your fathers. So you will be my people and I will be your God, your Elohim. And so this is what I'm saying about the blood covenant, the atonement when Yeshua died for our sins. He does exactly the same thing thing. He places his Holy Spirit. When you become a believer, a believer in Yeshua, a believer in Jesus Christ, when you become a believer, the Holy Spirit enters your heart. And what is the reason for it? To help us to be obedient to his commandments. Because he's going to be doing this with Israel on that day, atoning for their sins because they were stiff-necked all the way until that day. There's going to be many that will not believe in him until he returns. And then they look upon the one they pierced. And he will forgive them. And he will place the Holy Spirit, just like he offers everybody right now, into their hearts. Why, though? Why does he put the Holy Spirit in their hearts? Number one, to show them that he is Yahweh Elohim. He is the one that came. Number one, the scriptures will be open to them. So that they can truly follow the commandments of the Lord. Not all those that were made up in the Talmud, the oral laws, the days that they made up on their own, which they think they have the authority to do. But only to obey his commandments because they are not burdensome. They are not burdensome. They're not complicated, which they made things so very complicated. And so he will forgive them for adding, taking away and adding, and also for disrupting his calendar. They will be forgiven, and the Holy Spirit he will put in their hearts, and he'll give them understanding of the true Torah and the Torah only, and on who Mashiach is, which is Yahweh Elohim, the one they pierced. When he came to offer them atonement for their sins, right now he has offered them atonement for their sins. And they must, they, they, I just, I pray that they would believe this and receive him as Lord and Savior. 
Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the Mashiach. And he came and he's going to return. And so this, once again, verse 27, it says, I will put my Ruach, my Holy Spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. This is what should happen in a believer's life when they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You should welcome the commandments. You should welcome the obedience and the commandments. You should want to study more about how to become a royal holy priesthood. In the order, in the same order as Aaron and his sons, in the order of Melchizedek, who is Yeshua HaMashiach, I truly believe. Amen and amen. And so now, we go, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of that, and then we'll go ahead and commence. Verse 29, it says, Moreover, I will save you from all your uncleanness. Now give me a second here. I will save you from your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and multiply it, and I will not bring a famine on you. So this is uh, Ezekiel 36 still. 3630. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the produce of the field, so that you will not receive again the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good. And you will loathe yourselves to your own faces for your iniquities and for your abominations. I am not doing this for your sake, declares Lord Yahweh. Let it be known to you. I'm not doing this for your sake, declares Lord Yahweh. For any of us, any of us. He's not doing it for our sake. He says, let it be known to you. Be ashamed and feel dishonor for your ways, O house of Israel. Thus says Lord Yahweh, on the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, atoning, the day of atonement, I will cause the cities to be inhabited and the waste places to be rebuilt. This is his millennial kingdom on earth. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of being a desolation in the sight of everyone who passes by. And they will say, this desolate land has become like the Garden of Eden. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the waste, desolate, and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that remain all around you will know that I, Yahweh, have rebuilt the ruined cities and planted that which was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken and will do it. Thus says Lord Yahweh, This also I will let the house of Israel inquire of me to do for them. I will increase their men like a flock, like the flock for holy offerings, like the flock at Jerusalem during her appointed times. So will the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. Then they will know that I am, he is, Yahweh Elohim Yeshua. Because Yeshua also stated, before Abraham was, I am. It is no coincidence, it is no mystery. Him and the Father are one. Amen. And so now we go ahead and we're going to go to this also was the covenant of the blood covenant given. It's a Davidic covenant that a Mashiach would come. And he came and he's coming again. So in 2 Samuel verse 7 verses 12 and 13. This is the Davidic covenant, the blood covenant that came to pass and will come to pass upon its completion to fulfill all these wonderful prophesied holy days. Verse 12 of 2 Samuel chapter 7, it says, When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up one of your seed after you, who will come forth from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. The throne room, the Merkava. The throne room, the same throne room that Yeshua, that, that Isaiah saw and that Yohanan confirmed, that same sanctuary in heaven right now, as we worship him in spirit and in truth, he sits on his throne. This day will come to pass when he sits on his throne in Jerusalem, when heaven meets earth, a, a sanctuary not built by human hands. 
this will be appear on this on this earth and he will reside as our king as our high priest if you understand the connection now we are to be a royal priesthood a set apart holy nation we are in training my beloved to become a holy, holy priesthood and we must train we must study and conduct ourselves likewise you're not going to hear this in too many churches it's a it's a crying shame it is a crying shame so this should, this should be mentioned in so many other churches this this message because it is a message of truth a message of truth amen and amen and so now we'll go ahead and proceed um, let me go ahead and get there we're going to go ahead and proceed with uh, with the blessing uh, after Torah blessing, the blessing after reading the Torah, and then we'll go ahead and start with the Haf Torah, the prophet portion. Okay, so let me go ahead and get there. You know what? Let me go ahead and touch a little bit. Uh, I mentioned I was going to be mentioning a leper. Okay, the leper. Okay, and so this is just amazing. It's not going to be too long before we exit uh, the Torah portion. Uh, the um, the um, the Torah portion. And we're going to go ahead and add this in here uh, because there's so much. There is so much, um, and so it's just a couple scriptures here about leprosy. Okay. And, um, and so let me go ahead and get to that scripture here. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. And, and so we take uh, the statutes for cleansing the leper. This is a uh, chapter. Uh, let me see. Let me go ahead and, and get the leprosy. Chapter 13. Okay, 13. Uh, the statutes about leprosy. It says, Then Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling or a scab, or a bright spot, and it becomes as an infection of leprosy on the skin of his body. Then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, right? Or to one of his sons, the priest. So this also applies to the millennial kingdom. But where I'm going to go with this is just amazing. It is amazing because the Lord, when he walked on this earth, he showed us who is the Lord, who is the high priest, okay? And uh, how he can cure leprosy in just a second. Okay? He can heal our bodies. I mean, just like that. And this is going on all over the world. Miracles, healings going on. And I've been hearing about some healings going on. It's been amazing. What I what I see through my eyes is, is something. But when you see miracles happen right before your very eyes, this is, I, I've been hearing about testimonies. And confirmed testimonies by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's because he's trying to show us that miracles do, do still happen. And to have faith. To have faith. And so I love this uh, about the leprosy. About the leper. There's many different types of leprosy, right? That's actually a skin disease. But what I'm saying, a leper, a sinful person, an unbelieving wicked person, they have leprosy. And it's spiritually sick leprosy. And the Lord can cleanse you of your sins and make you into a new man. Clear. He can make a, a ashes. He can make a beautiful rose. He can make a beautiful uh, from ashes. He can make a beautiful rose. And so he can cleanse you of all your leprosy. Which also symbolically it could be sin. Leprosy. And he can make you into a new man. He can break those chains, those bondages that you're in. And he can make you clean. Put on you clothing, white clothing, garments, clothing, linen. And he can make you into a priest, a holy priesthood. He can change your life around. I know because I was one of those. Yes, a sinner saved by his grace and his mercy. And I stand here today as a witness, as, as a testimony unto the Lord, so that he may receive all the glory and honor. Amen. And so I'm going to read you just a little bit here about the leper, and then we'll go on and we'll, we'll pray out of this. 
Torah portion, and we'll go on to the prophet portion. And so once again, there are so many details that go in about the statutes, the, the rules, the, the instructions, if you want to say, about leprosy, how they were to be brought to Aaron, the high priest, or to a priest, one of Aaron's sons, and, and the priest all the way down from those generations. And once again, this will be applied in the millennial kingdom. And so you can read all these chapters. It's like two, it's like uh, how many verses long? It's all the way to verse 59. It's 59 verses that have to do with leprosy. And so there was all these instructions every seven days to come and to see if the leprosy had went away. Seven days they would be uh, uh, confined into their rooms, confined into a room not to come out. Okay, so if you want to go in depth about leprosy, go ahead and read all of chapter 13. And so we're going to go ahead and go to 59 of chapter 13 about this leprosy. And so what I want to explain and what I want to share with you that all these things that were need to be done, instructions for the human priests, okay, to be done. Instructions given by the Lord to be done for a man who has leprosy. I'm going to show you a scripture, a very short scripture, and then we're going to say, wow. Okay, so, uh, but I'm going to go to 59 chapter 13, and it says this. It says, this is the law for the mark of leprosy in a garment of wool or linen, whether in the warp. Okay, so in the warp or the wolf. So this is an article of clothing. Okay, so there were so many different instructions, but it says this is the law. This is the instruction for it. Okay, and so we go on, and we're going to be in, in uh, chapter 14. Uh, we're going to be reading more about the Day of Atonement. Right into chapter 14, it's like he, go, he goes in fully to the Day of Atonement in chapter 16. And also he continues... Uh, with the leper, the statutes for cleansing a leper, right into chapter 14. So it's actually chapter 13, and then we chap tap chapter 14. It has a lot to do about the leper. We got two full chapters going into chapter 14. Okay, so now we go ahead and move forward. So we got two chapters, 13 and 14, that has to do with lepers, right? lepers and other things uh, towards the end here but the offerings and all the instructions that were given okay to cleanse a leper and about leprosy okay so the net that being said we go to matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 8 and we read yeshua cleanses a leper okay and so we got the same things given to Aaron and the priests, and we go to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Okay, 1 through 4. Now when Yeshua came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and was bowing down before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So number one, it shows us that this was a believer. He knew who Yeshua was. He knew that Yeshua was healing. And this is why Yeshua was doing this. Yeshua was known. He was healing. And so this, this man that had leprosy, remember they would have to, they, 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 were, they were considered unclean. No one would want to be around them. They were considered unclean. No one would want to be around them. And so today I see in society, I see people with leprosy, not physical leprosy like on their hands or on their bodies, but people who are spiritually sick so very much that drugs or whatever it may be, most of the times it's drugs that sucks a person's life out of them. And ultimately, they end up with no life, walking corpses. You can say that. So bad that nobody wants to be touched by them. No one wants to be seen around them. 
and everybody wants to get away from them because they look like walking dead. They're dirty. They might be smelly. And this is what drugs do to a person. Poison. And it is sad when you see a life being taken by these bondages that they're in. And so this is the way I see leprosy. A form of leprosy today. But they got the choice. If they're willing and they want to be healed of this leprosy. They want to be delivered from the bondage that they're in. It's their choice. And the Lord is there for any person that has reached that point or maybe is going down that road to that point. Maybe you just started dabbling in drugs. Maybe you you becoming more of an alcoholic and you can't seem to stop it. And you see that it's getting out of control. And maybe you're heading down that way. Maybe things are not getting not, not, not right for you. Maybe you just lost your job. Because you know this addiction has taken you and is gripping you and it has a hold on you. So maybe it's to those out there that maybe are trying drugs for the first time. And you say, well, just a little won't hurt. Just a little won't hurt. And you're starting to make up excuses. Well, I just drink. And I just do a little bit of that. Well, that's how it starts, just a little bit. And then it consumes you, and then you go more, and then you go more, and then you end up walking like that corpse, like the walking dead, those that are lepers in the streets that nobody wants to touch or wants to look at. Those who are outcasts because they're lepers now. It only starts with a little bit. You out there who's starting to dabble just a little bit won't hurt. Just another drink won't hurt. And then it becomes two. Then it becomes three. Maybe only on the weekends you drink. Oh, I just only drink on the weekends. And then it comes, okay, just a little bit during the week to get me through. And then all of a sudden you're drinking every day. Whatever it might be. It's a road that leads to destruction. It's a low, it's a road that leads to destruction and it'll, it'll snuff your soul from you. It leads to death, spiritual death, spiritual death. And that's number one, spiritual death. You want to be very careful. And you might as well stop. If you're just starting, you might as well stop right now. Stop. And so we go back to Matthew 8 about the leprosy. Yeshua shows them that he is Yahweh Elohim. He is the high priest and that he can cure you like that. He can break those bondages. He can break those chains and he can clean you up and he can make you brand new. Jesus, Yeshua, cleanses a leper. Matthew 8, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Now when Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and was bowing down before him, bowing down before him, and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed, immediately. It is because this man's faith, it's because of his faith that made him clean. It's because of the grace and through faith he believed in him. He said he bowed down to him. He was humble. He was broken. He was a leper. But he was willing to be cleansed and he believed in Jesus. He believed in him. 
and he bowed to him. He bowed before him. And Jesus said and stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. The Lord is willing. He wishes that none would perish, but that all would have everlasting life. The Lord is willing, my beloved. All you unbelievers out there, all you wicked, all you unbelievers, he is willing. He is willing. His arms are stretched out. He's like, come to me. Unfortunately, many, many do not see until they're broken, until they're walking like one of those corpses, like the walking dead. And then they cry out when the, when the enemy has sucked everything out of you. And maybe you have lost your job. Maybe you lost all your glorious belongings, your material. Maybe your broken family, maybe your wife has left you because of your problem. Unfortunately, it has to come down to that. So finally you cry out to him. And he's willing to accept you and cleanse you of your leprosy. So if you're out there and you hear this, and the Lord is tugging on your heart, you're tired. You're tired because I know after all said and done and the party is over. And the party is over. And you feel sick. Maybe, maybe you've done something you weren't supposed to do and you feel sick and the drugs have consumed your body or the alcohol and you got a headache and you're, you're suffering from a headache and you can't seem to get rid of it because you have this terrible hangover. It's, in, it's insanity because then you just grab more. Let me drink another day so that it will go away. Remedies, right? Remedies. So that you can continue. Or maybe you're doing some kind of drug that makes you able to drink more. So you take a little hit or whatever of a drug that makes you what? Sober so that you could drink more so you can continue to go longer. But after all said and done, you got to go to work that week. And then you're not able to go to work. Maybe sometimes you are, but sometimes you don't feel like it. This is why it just starts a phase in your life and it slowly but surely it dominates you. Maybe you think, oh, I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. Well, it'll grab a hold of you and maybe, maybe one day you won't be able to handle it no more. And you will cry out and he says, I am willing. I am willing. I'm right here. And this is all he's waiting for you to call out. He is willing. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. And he will give you the strength you need to stop the insanity. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one. But go, show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Tell them what you said. Tell them what you've seen. Tell them that you have been cleansed like this by me, in other words. So he says, tell no one, but go to them according to the law. And this man ends up going and he, he told them who did it. He knew that he was, but it had to be confirmed by the priest that they were no longer a leper according to the commandment. Whose commandment? Once again, to his commandment. For Yeshua and the Father are one according to his commandment. So it needed to be what? Legal according to his commandments. To be what? Considered clean so that he could walk in society again and he could walk amongst the people. And so it is just beautiful how he does this and how his commandments are still righteous. They are righteous and altogether good for us. 
Amen. And so we go on now. And that, that would be it for the Torah. I just wanted to add that in there because it also speaks about uh, leprosy in so many chapters here. And so, and then it goes on in verse, in chapter 16, if you want to read the Day of Atonement in full, be commencing in verse, in chapter 16, you can go in and read that. And uh, just to add uh, Leviticus chapter 17, about, uh, once again, about the Day of Atonement, because we have that coming up pretty soon, 10 days after the Feast of Trumpets, we have the Day of Atonement. It is a Sabbath day. And so I'm going to go ahead and read Leviticus chapter 17, verses 29 through 34. And I'm going to be reading you perpetual statute. That means forever. This is the divine connection into the millennial kingdom. We must understand this. Leviticus chapter 17. And this shall be a perpetual statute for you. What? And it's a specific date. Once again, just like we read in Leviticus chapter 23 and Leviticus chapter 17, it says, verse 29 through 34. So you can read all of chapter 16 about the Day of Atonement. And this shall be a perpetual statue. That means forever for you in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. Now, for those who don't understand God's calendar, this is not speaking about July on your Gregorian calendar. Many out there do not understand this. They read this and they don't understand about the, his calendar, about biblical events that he set forth, dates given by his mouth that are holy. He did not invent the Gregorian calendar. That is man's calendar. But today to understand when these dates fall, we need to use that calendar so we could Others would understand this. And first of all, we must explain to them what his calendar is. And so this is his calendar made by his mouth. And it's not talking about July 10th. Okay, because it says on the seventh month, in the seventh month, on the 10th day of the month. So if you're a believer and you're reading the Bible for the first time and you read this, you say, oh, well, yeah, that's in July. That's July 10th. Oh, yeah, Day of Atonement. That, that's cool. That's July 10th. No, it's not July 10th. It's the seventh month. It's the seventh month. And it is best kept that is it is the seventh month, and that's it. You say, well, what's the name of that month? This is where we get to the calendar that the Jews are on. This is not a, a calendar of the Jews. It's adopted by the Babylon, Babylonian calendar. So those are not the names of the months according to Yahweh, Yeshua. It's always you. When you read the Bible, you're going to see seventh month. This is why there's no name here. Okay, so you say this is the seventh month. The seventh month on the tenth day. That is the Day of Atonement. Now there is a name for it. There is a name for it. But that's on the Jewish calendar. Once again, it's a Babylonian given name. And I, I don't even want to mention it. But I talk against it. I, do, I talk against it. This is the seventh day. This is the seventh month. I'm sorry. And if you want to get more specifically, you could give it a name. In the days of Solomon, when the, when the temple was righteous, we had the month of Ethanim. Ethanim, Ethanim. Just just put in your search engine in the Bible; it'll come out. In the in the Kings, in First and Second Kings, and in, in the days of Solomon, the righteous temple, the month of Ethanim. E T H A, N I M, Ethanim. E T H A, N I M, Ethanim. And so you can look for that. That is the seventh month. But it is not Tishri. It is not Tishri. And I'll say that name right now. It is not Tishri. Be looking out for that, um, that special I'm going to come out with, okay? And, and you're going to see that it's not a God-given name. It's not. It's a false God. And it's not good. Okay, so no, let's go ahead and continue. 
So in Leviticus chapter 17, it says, And this shall be a perpetual statute for you in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month. You shall humble your souls and do, no, and do not do any work, whether the native or the sojourner who sojourns with you, the Gentile. This is for both of us. For it is on this day that atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you, and you will be clean from all your sins before Yahweh. It is to be a Sabbath of solemn rest for you, that you may humble your souls. It is a perpetual statute. So the priest who has anointed and ordained to minister as a priest in his father's place shall make atonement. He shall thus put on the linen garments, the linen garments, the holy garments, and make atonement for the holy sanctuary. And he shall make atonement for the tent of meeting and for the altar. He shall also make atonement for the priest and for all the people of the assembly. Now you shall have this as a perpetual statute forever. To make atonement for the sons of Israel for all their sins once every year. And just as Yahweh has commanded Moses, so he did. Now let me just stop right there. The Jews bless their hearts. Okay, I love them with all my heart. Okay, I have total respect for the Jews, the rabbis. Those that have not believed in Jesus, Yeshua, Mashiach, as their Savior, that he is Yahweh Elohim, and that he brought the blood covenant for them to be forgiven, so that they don't have to do this. They still continue not to believe in him, but we pray for their salvation. Once a year, they do this on the Day of Atonement. So let's not confuse the two. The atonement for us and for them, whoever is willing to be atoned for, and we're back to the Day of Atonement because I, I placed, the Lord placed it on my heart right now to share this even further. That let, let us not confuse the two. Because they do this every year, that means we got to do this every year. We respect how they go up once a year. We respect that. But we also pray for their salvation so that their sins can be atoned for today. Today. Tomorrow. It's offered. Salvation is offered to them for the atonement of their sins once and for all. Once and for all. You don't have to go up every year like they do right now. It is a big deal. A very big deal. For the Jews that do not believe in Jesus, Yeshua. But we also as believers, we celebrate this day because we celebrate it because of the, of the atoning blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. We celebrate this day. We celebrate this day as the Lord has atoned for us. He has washed us clean and we pray that they would understand this. We never tear down, but we build up. We te never tear down, but we build up. We love them. And they can rejoice on this Day of Atonement. Why? Because the Lord brought something so glorious. The Day of Atonement. And he will. It, it says in Scripture that many of them will not believe in it until they see him. And yes, he will have compassion and mercy, Israel's redemption, and he will forgive them. And he will atone for their sins on that day when begins the millennial kingdom. But once again, they have the offering today. So when we see as believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we see this event coming, the day of atonement. Let us know this and consider it's a day of rejoicing for us, but also a day of sorrow. Because they haven't believed in Mashiach yet. So we pray for them. At the same time, they are mourning. And they go once a year to be cleansed of their sins. When their sins can be blotted out forever. Right now, today. So we continue to bring them prayers. And understand why they are there. And we pray for their salvation. For the Day of Atonement was for everyone. The saving blood, the atoning blood of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? Amen and amen. So let's follow these feast days. Yes, 
commanded to do so. Let's follow these fall feasts, okay? And so let me go ahead and continue now. And we'll go ahead and pray out of the Torah portion, and we'll just go ahead and read through the next two portions, the prophet portion and the renewed covenant, okay? So let me go ahead and get to that screen. And uh, we'll go ahead and pray and then continue here. So after, uh, this is the blessing after the reading, the Torah. It says, Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and planted life everlasting in our midst. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Noten HaTorah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. And amen. And so now we'll go to the prophet portion, the Hav Torah blessing. It says, Baruch Atah. So those who do not know or understand what Hav Torah, Hav Torah means, it's the prophet portion. Uh, this is the Hav Torah blessing. Baruch Atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim Yeshua, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Those of you do, who do not know who Adonai or who, what title is Adonai, Adonai in the Hebrew means master. It's a title. It's not his name. It's not his name. It's a title. And it means master. Master Elohim. Master Yahweh Elohim. Or Master Yeshua. They are one. Okay, and so, Baruch Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of, the, King of the universe, that's what it means, who has cho chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words, which were spoken truthfully. Baruch atah Adonai habochel neva'ai ha'emet v'zedek. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses prophets of truth and righteousness. That's what that means, okay? And so let's go ahead and read this, and then we'll go ahead and continue. All right, so we're reading from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 7 through 17. Then David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. Then David arose and went with all the people who were with him and from Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, of Elohim, which is called by the name, the very name of Yahweh of hosts, who is enthroned above the cherubim. And they drove the ark of Elohim on a new cart, that they might bring it from the house of Abimadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ohio, Ohio, the son of Abimadab, were leading the new cart. So they brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And also Ahio was walking ahead of the ark. Now David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before Yahweh with all kinds of instruments made of fir wood, and with lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. Amazing. Amazing. This is worship, right? This is David worshiping with instruments, right? This is just amazing. Lyres, harps, and tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. Then they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, and Uzzah reached out towards the ark of God and took hold of it, because the oxen nearly upset it. And the anger of Yahweh burned against Uzzah, and God struck him down there for his irreverence, and he died there by the ark of Elohim. And David became very angry because of Yahweh's breaking out against Uzzah. And that place is called Per Uzzah to this day. It is holy. It is holy. It is holy. So David was angry, though. He was like, why did you do that? It was holy, though. To see was, he was placing this as a, an example for us today. As an example for us today. We are not to interfere with his holiness. We are not to interfere. We are not to add to or remove from or take away. We are to be in reverence of his holiness. And he made an example here. David was upset, though. He was upset. And so we go on and continue. We never question, never question why Yah Elohim, Yeshua, does what he does in this world. Let's just say it is perfect. 
and we must respect and obey the Lord in all his righteous acts of judgment. Amen. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen and things happen today. But we have to know that he is in control and he knows what he's doing. Even though sometimes we don't know and we question. Let us not question, but just give thanks to him in reverence. So David was afraid of Yahweh that day. He put fear in him. Fear, righteous fear, right? Righteous fear. And we should once again have righteous fear, reverent fear of Yahweh Elohim, reverent fear. So maybe this was the reason why he put David, it says, so David was afraid of Yahweh that day. And he said, how can the ark of Yahweh come to me? And David was unwilling to move the ark of Yahweh into the city of David with him. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. Thus the ark of Yahweh remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And Yahweh blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Then it was told to King David, saying, Yahweh has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him on the account of the ark of Elohim. So David went and brought up the ark of Elohim. Uh, just give me a moment here. Uh, brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And so it happened that when those who were carrying the ark of Yahweh had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David was dancing before Yahweh with all his strength. David dances, right? David dances. Amen and amen. I love it. And David was girded with a linen ephod. Okay, so once again, wearing linen, and it was the ephod, okay, made for a priest, okay, made for a holy priest. And so David was a royal king priest, okay. And so once again, who, we, who do we have sitting on the throne of David? Our high priest, okay. And so once again, a messianic figure. So the ephod has everything to do with the 12 tribes. Okay, so it's just amazing. This is what the, 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 the high priest wore was the ephod. Okay, so we went through that earlier in the chapters in the Torah. So it says, uh, so verse 15 says, So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of Yahweh with shouting and the sound of the trumpet, the shofar. Okay. This coming Yom Teruah, it's a memorial of blowing the trumpets, right? A memorial of blowing the shofars. So then in 16, David dances. I love this. David dances before Yahweh, right? He dances before Yahweh. So then it happened as the ark of Yahweh came into the city of David, that Michal, the daughter of Shaul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before Yahweh. And she despised him in her heart. She got mad. She got jealous. She got mad. And they brought in the ark of Yahweh and placed it in place inside the tent, which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before Yahweh. Then David completed offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings. And he blessed the people in the name of Yahweh of hosts. And he apportioned all the people to all the multitude of Israel. The Ark of the Covenant was coming home. Both to men and women, a cake of bread and one of dates and one of raisins to each one. Then all the people went in, in, into his, each to his house. But David returned to bless his household. And Mike, Michael, the daughter of Shaul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel has glorified himself today. She was angry. She got jealous. He uncovered himself today in the eyes of his servant maids, as one of the worthless ones shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michal, Michael or Michal or Michelle, right? It was before Yahweh who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of Yahweh. We know who Shaul was, right? Over Israel. So this was, was his daughter. This became his wife. It says, over Israel, therefore I will celebrate before Yahweh. 
and I will be esteemed even more lightly than this, and will be humble in my own eyes. Amen. But with the maids of whom you have spoken, she was jealous. With them I will be glorified. And Mishael, or Michael, the daughter of Shaul, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. None. And so we continue to verse uh, 17 of 7, and then we'll commence with the next uh, renewed covenant. It says, The ark of God inhabits a tent. Now it happened when the king inhabited the, his house, and Yahweh had given him rest on every side from all his enemies, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I inhabit a house of cedar, but the ark of God inhabits tent curtains. So Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for Yahweh is with you. Now it happened in the same night that the word of Yahweh came to Nathan, saying, Go and say to my servant David, Thus says Yahweh, are you ready? Are you the one whom, whom would build me a house to inhabit? For I have not inhabited a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt, even to this day. But I have been going about in a tent, even in a tabernacle. Wherever I have gone with about with all the sons of Israel, did I speak a word with one of the tribes of Israel, which I have commanded to shepherd my people Israel? saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? So now, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, I myself took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people. Amen. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of great men who are on the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, the millennial kingdom, Abba Father, Amen and Amen, that they may dwell in their own place and not be disturbed again. And the unrighteous will not afflict them any more as formerly, even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies, Israel. Yahweh also declares to you that Yahweh will make a house for you, his millennial kingdom, his temple, the Merkaba, his sanctuary. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up one of your seed after you, we read this earlier, who will come forth from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever and ever and ever. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. And so uh, we go in and commence. It says, I will reprove him with the rod of man and the strikes from the sons of men. But my loving kindness shall not be removed from him, as I removed it from Saul, when I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words, according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. What a blessing, once again, his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Promise, the covenant promise, the blood covenant promise made by Yeshua himself, and he's going to return. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. And so now we go ahead with the blessing after the Haftorah, after the prophet portion. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, rock of all ages, righteous in all generations, the faithful God who says and does, who speaks and fulfills all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, Abba, Father. For not one word of yours, Abba, is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate Elohim and King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh. Baruch atah Adonai, ha'el ha'neaman bechol devarav, which means... Blessed are you, O Lord, 
the Elohim, the God who is faithful in all his words. Amen and amen and amen. And so now we go with the renewed covenant. The renewed covenant portion. And then with this, we'll go ahead and end the service for today. Okay. So we're going to be reading out of the book of Revelation. If you want to get there, uh, it's the book of Revelation, chapter 4, 1 through 8. I love this. this is the most very most important of, of the Torah because we got the beginning and we got the Lord coming to confirm everything that was spoken by him in the Torah. Amen. For him and the Father are one. Okay. So you cannot separate the two. Okay. So he is one along with his Holy Spirit. So the new covenant blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the words of the new covenant, of the renewed covenant. Amen and amen. Baruch atah Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua Adonai Noten Habaret Hadashah Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Barit Harasha, that's what that means, the renewed covenant. Amen? And so now we go ahead and read Revelation uh, chapter 4, 1 through 8. Let me just go ahead and get some water. Blessed be the word um, that came through Yeshua Messiah, Yahweh Elohim, for his one confirmation with John, the revelator, Yohanan. After these things, I looked. So I want to go ahead and once again tell you this is the throne in heaven, okay, that's going to be on this earth, confirmation. The Merkava, okay, the Merkava. I always like saying the Merkava now uh, because in Hebrew it is the chariot throne room. The chariot throne room of our Lord, his sanctuary in the heavens, his temple that will be here on this earth. After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard like the sound of a trumpet, like the sound of a shofar, speaking with me, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must, what must take place after these things. Immediately I was in the Ruach, in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne. So once again, we got to understand that he's going to be sitting on his throne here on earth, as you read in Ezekiel chapter 44. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and a sardius in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and upon those thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white garments of linen, of linen. This is how we know that these services take place in the heavens. Angelic messengers dressed in linen. And these are going to be our garments once again. The same garments that he gave instructions to Moses to wear. As he was acting high priest and the priests, the sons of Zadok, all the way through the generations. Linen. Around the throne, so once again it says, And out from the throne, verse 5 says, And out from the throne come flashes of lightning, and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits, Rehot, of Elohim, of God. And before the throne there were something like a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the center and around the throne... Four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. And the first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf. And the third creature had a face like that of a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. 
and the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, and are full of eyes around and within. And day and night they do not cease to say, and if you would once again reverberate the prophet Isaiah, confirming this through the prophet John, and John referring back to Isaiah about the throne room, the sanctuary that will be here on earth as it is in heaven. And that is commencing right now. If you would say this with me from wherever you're at, let us say, holy, 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 kadosh, 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 is the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come, who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, Abba Father. Worthy are you, Abba Father. Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua Mashiach, for you are one. Worthy are you, Father. Worthy are you, O Lord, our Elohim, to receive all glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of you and because of your, they will exist and were created. Let me go ahead and read that once again. Worthy are you, O Lord, our God, our Elohim, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, remember, and on the seventh day he rested. And because of your will, because of your will, they existed and were created. Because of your will, Abba Father, they exist today and were created by you. And you sanctified the Sabbath day. And you set it apart as holy for a holy people, a royal priesthood. And you set it apart for us, Abba. This day, this holy sanctified day, you set apart as holy. Because you willed, they existed, everything exists. Everything that you have blessed us with, Abba Father. And they were created by you. And so I thought I would bring you that scripture confirming in the book of Revelation as we come to the conclusion of this service. Thank you for hanging in there if you've been listening. Thank you so very much. And so let us give thanks to the Lord on this Sabbath day of rest and just look about you as I started off this service. It's about intimacy. It's about intimacy with the Lord and what he has created. Look around you. Look at creation. Look at your children. Look at your families. Look at the jobs that he's given you. The skills that he has given you. Because he gave you your bodies. He gave you your brains. He gave you everything to do those things you need to do to work. Let us give him thanks for all these things. Because this is the first six days of creation. And this is the day that we can offer up our offerings of obedience and be obedient to his Sabbath day of rest and understand and be intimate with him here on earth as it is in heaven. Let us be intimate with him. Amen. Amen and amen, my beloved. So let's go ahead and pray out the blessing after the reading of the new covenant. Baruch atah Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua. Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and planted life everlasting in our midst. Baruch atah Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua. Notain habarit harasha. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. Giver of the new covenant by your blood, the blood covenant, which comes to pass and will fully come to pass when you return to us, Abba Father. Thank you so very much. For it is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. 
Etz Chaim, which means tree of life. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. And let me just say that it started with the tree of life in Genesis, and it will end with the tree of life in the millennial kingdom in the new heavens, new earth. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. Let us take hold of it. And those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. They are shalom. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim Yeshua, Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord, Yahweh our Elohim, Yeshua, King of the Universe. Asher natan lanu hadavar, hachai b'mashiach Yeshua, who has given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. And we all say, Amen and Amen and Amen. Okay, so I almost forgot before I, I know there was a brief silence there. Uh, before I forget, before I forget, last uh, Sabbath service, I did tell you I was going to give you another practical thing to uh, be obedient to his commandments, something practical, okay, something that you could actually start doing. Uh, last week, I gave you uh, the pork, okay, give up pork, okay, uh, the Sabbath, to start the Sabbath, okay, so I gave you those two, number two, the, number one, the Sabbath, and then uh, something uh, um, not too hard to do, just take, take pork out of your diet and read the labels on your food. Uh, that could be number two. Now, here's another one. And uh, hopefully you're not too much of a, shell a shellfish eater. I'm talking about lobster. I'm talking about uh, shrimps. Uh, shrimps, okay? Uh, so this is next on your dietary laws, okay? The dietary laws. Now, remember, you can find all the dietary laws in Leviticus chapter 11. And yes, it talks about not eating uh, cats or dogs. I Hopefully you're not eating cats or dogs or horses or anything like that. Uh, but it goes through the list in chapter Leviticus uh, chapter 11. But the most, and maybe there's different nations that eat different things, okay, delicacies and stuff. And so you could go through the whole chapter yourself, but practical things you can do. And that is stop eating shrimp. Stop eating shrimps. And stop eating um, uh, lobster. You can say that's one of them also. And so you can read through this, and it is it is proven that shrimp contains a lot of high cholesterol, and they are bottom feeders. What do I mean by bottom feeders? They feed on all the poop. Everything that is eaten by the fishes and the fishes poop, they poop out of them, okay, uh, is in the actual shrimp okay uh, it doesn't matter how much you clean them it's in their dna it's just the, what they are they're scavengers uh, they eat from the bottom of the ocean everything that's falling down on the water so the lord's dietary laws they're his dietary laws and he knows what's clean and unclean so we say well why why do we have to do this because of the fact that because he says so because he says so, okay? So that's number one. If you want to be obedient, hey, you can choose not to be obedient or disobey or think that he has cleansed everything that we could eat. And once again, maybe we'll do a special on that because he never meant that, okay? And so we know Yeshua would not break his own commandments. He will not break his own commandments written by his fingers, okay? So we know he was obedient, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and he never said now you can eat everything you want. He never said this. Because we also read in Leviticus, I mean, in Ezekiel chapter 44, we are going to be teaching the laws. We're going to be sharing the laws. We're going to be sharing with others. We're going to be judges. We're going to be a holy priesthood, just like Yeshua, following his commandments. And that includes all the dietary laws, okay? And so all his laws, okay, they are perfect. They are meant for us to be obedient to. So what's another practical thing we can do? We can stop eating shellfish, okay? Uh, anything that has to do with shellfish. So in verse 12 of Leviticus chapter 11, it says, Whatever in the water, in the sea, in the ocean, okay, in the water, that does not have fins and scales is detestable to you, okay? Whatever doesn't have fins and doesn't have scales, is detestable to you. 
And so I got a little brief, a brief list, okay? We'll go ahead and end it right now. A brief, um, a brief list I made, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, okay? And so um, it's a brief list from chapter 11. Uh, just really brief. Uh, you can probably find out more. Uh, fish, okay, and 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 uh, and uh, shellfish, okay. You could probably find out more, a little more research. So anything that does not have fins and scales is detestable to you. It means you cannot, you should not eat them, uh, and be obedient. These are some of the ways to be obedient to the Lord. Shellfish, okay. We went through that. The shark, the shark, okay. The lobster, uh, the dolphin, okay. Uh, the whale, the whale, okay, the stingrays, the rays, the hagfish, the hagfish, and the catfish, okay? These are all things that do not have, that swim in the water in our seas and do not have fins and scales. They are detestable to you, says the voice of the Lord. And we know Yahweh Yeshua is one. Says the voice of Yeshua, Yahweh Elohim, for he is one. Okay, so this is the voice of Elohim, for he is the one that gave us these commandments. Okay, and so that is another practical thing you can do to start being obedient to the Lord's commandments. Okay, and he will honor you and he will bless you when you please the Father. Okay, and so with that, I go ahead and end this for today. Um, and so, yes, uh, you'll hear from me again next Sabbath. Uh, hopefully, remember to keep me in prayers um, and to share these services with others, okay? Let's please the Father together in love, okay, in love, and uh, pray for each other, okay? So let us, let us uh, continue to be obedient children in his house. Amen? Okay, so I'll see you or you'll hear from me next week, okay? Goodbye for now.